When is the right time to rebuild? How do I even go about trading some of the biggest and best names in fantasy football? If you're asking these questions or you're a contending team looking to go all in, then do not skip this video because on today's episode of the Regression to the Mean podcast, we are going to answer one of life's age-old questions. Is it time to rebuild? After going through why it might be time to rebuild, we're going to give you four dynasty trades that can help turn your middle-of-the-pack dynasty team to a potential contender in the next two to three seasons. I'm your host, Sean Moran, and I am joined by my co-host, good friend, and knower of ball, Aiden Holler. Aiden, how are you doing today, man? I am doing well, Sean. That that intro got me fired up, if if we're being quite honest. Um, yeah, I know in our last episode, if you guys haven't had a chance, go check it out. We talked about more so the other uh, the other end of this, you know. When now we, we're, uh, we're making moves, we're flipping draft picks for guys that we want to go get. Um, today's a bit more challenging. Um, you're letting go of guys that have been on your rosters for years, likely. Um, we're going to go over some pretty big names here. Um, so buckle in. This is, uh, you know, not for not for the week today. Not for the faint um, art. But, not you know, art. at some point in Dynasty, you cannot, you know, hold on to assets too much on a sinking team. There's, um, We're going to go into it. But, um, you know, at some point, you've got to rebuild. You've got to start flipping assets and build for the future. So, Hopefully after today's video, we're going to give you guys a bit more confidence in doing so. It's never easy to trade some of your favorite players or some of the best players in fantasy, but time and time again, you do not want to be caught holding the Ezekiel Elliott bag, and I'll leave it at that. Today's episode will follow a pretty simple format. Aiden and I are going to highlight a few scenarios where it may make sense for you to blow it up and rebuild before diving into four different types of dynasty trades that could help turn around your team in the next few seasons. Before diving in, if you are part of the 70% of people who are watching this channel but aren't yet subscribed, go ahead, like this video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of the content we are dropping on this channel in the future. Aiden, ready to dive in? Let's get after it, man. It's rebuilt time. Okay, so I have three signs, three signs here that it might be time for you to rebuild. Uh, you and I were talking about this before we hopped on. The three that I have, first one, you're stuck in the middle. So you're barely making the playoffs. You're not advancing to the semis year after year, and, and your team isn't getting really any younger. You know, I, I think this one's pretty clear. You're, you're, you're in a situation where your team's good enough to make the playoffs. Your roster's decent, but you're missing kind of that young punch to get you over the finish line. The second sign that it might be time for you to rebuild, you lack draft capital. Maybe you made a win now move that didn't necessarily pan out. Maybe you gave up a first round pick for Josh Jacobs and Josh Jacobs then got hurt. You know, maybe, maybe that happened. Maybe hypothetically that, that could have happened to somebody in this uh, video <laughs> call here. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you are lacking the requisite draft capital to take a second quarterback or third quarterback you could need. Maybe you're going to miss out on a high upside guy in this draft because you missed on an all in move or it just didn't get you to where you thought you'd be. This happens all the time in Dynasty. Win now moves are are really important to make, but sometimes if you don't assess your win now move correctly, you can be in a position where you're just middle of the pack moving forward without that first or second round pick. The third sign that it might be time for you to rebuild, you lack high value assets. So when I say this high value assets in the super flex Dynasty format are QBs. Do you have two to three startable QBs? If the answer is, one and a half, um, you, you, may, you may need to make a jump. Maybe you have Anthony Richardson, but you also have Daniel Jones and, and Mac Jones. So I would count that as maybe 1.25 uh, startable quarterbacks that you may have heading into the 2024 Generous. season, right? So do you feel confident about your quarterback situation? And then how deep are you at wide receiver? If wide receivers don't comprise maybe the four or five best players on your roster, that's fine, right? Maybe you have some really solid running backs on your team, and that's great, and that's your strategy. But wide receivers are going to be at their peak much longer, ages like 27 to 31, typically for elite wide receivers, and that's plus what they're doing at the beginning of their career. So you want cheap wide receivers. You want quarterbacks. If you are lacking that from your roster, you may need to make some moves here to get more of those positions and those high value assets on your roster. When you're looking at this like big three between stuck in the middle, lack of draft capital, 
lack of high value assets. Which one do you think is the biggest sign that you need to rebuild, retool, and start over? Yeah. So I think a lot of times too, there's a good chance you fall into more than one of these buckets. Um, if you fall into more than one, it's it's absolutely time to press the rebuild button. I think most common here though is probably going to be the first one. As much fun as it is to make the playoffs, getting bounced in the quarterfinals every year, it's like you're not doing yourself any favors in dynasty leagues. You know, unless you're truly in that, you know, top two, maybe four teams in your league and you consistently find yourself there. If maybe, you know, like you're already in like the second year of your rebuild, you just made playoffs for the first time in a couple of years. I'm probably holding for now. Like maybe I've got some assets, I've got some good young players. I'm waiting. If if you've been in the playoffs, you know, two, three years in a row now and you don't find yourself advancing whatsoever, I personally think this is the most common as um, you know, change needs to happen. Your team hasn't gotten any younger and it's likely time to hit the reset. I think I'd say the first one is 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 gonna be the most relevant as, you know, it's a bummer getting fifth and sixth every year. It's just, you know, like you're not gaining anything. Really not gaining anything. For me, if you don't have two stud QBs and super flex, or you have one incredible QB and like two to three solid starters that could get the job done, I, I just don't see a world where you're winning dynasty leagues. You, I just, I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to pivot unless you get that second quarterback. And we'll talk through strategies that can get you a mid to high first that allow you to take one of these young quarterbacks in this draft. But in my opinion, you need wide receivers and QBs. And if you don't have the horses there, you, you need to figure out how you can flip some of your aging assets into more of those assets to fill out your roster. Uh, Dynasty is one of those things where you, it's not like when redraft, you would never trade the wide receiver one because you will never get the wide receiver one back in production. But a Dynasty, if you can trade an aging wide receiver one for multiple wide receivers that you can start, that's just going to bring you more positive ROI for years to come. I, are you ready to dive into some of these trades that we've built out? Let's do it. It's they're, it's they're bad to get audacious. spicy. They're pretty it's bad audacious. to get spicy for sure. Okay, so I'm going to start things off here. The first trade that I would make, I would trade Tyree Kill. So if you are a roster that has the <laughs> cheetah on uh, on your team and you are not oh, making God. the playoffs or you're lacking another good quarterback, you're going to have to flip this age 30 wide receiver supernova to make your team better. It's going to be incredibly difficult. I've got him on a team that's contending now, so I don't have to make this decision. But I, I do not want to be in a position where I trade one of the unique talents of, of really this entire generation and you're trading away a future Hall of Famer. So that's that's never going to be a fun task, but it's one that you'll have to do. And when I'm trading someone like Tyree Kill, which is a Hall of Fame caliber aging wide receiver at the peak of their value, um, I'm looking to either flip him for potentially a younger cost controlled wide receiver plus a opportunity to take a quarterback or an opportunity to take another wide receiver. So I, I want to get two younger wide receivers or a wide receiver and a quarterback if I'm trading someone like Tyree Kill. So I have two types of trades here that I think are worth making when you have Tyree Kill on your roster. So the first one would be Tyree Kill for Michael Pittman plus a mid to late 2024 first. The second trade that I have here is Tyree Kill for Terry McLaurin plus a early to mid 2024 first round pick. So in terms of how we're breaking this down, like why would I trade Tyree Kill in the first place? There are no stats that are going to indicate that you should trade Tyree Kill. It's just they're not there. He had one of the best seasons of his career, one of the better seasons over the past 10 years. If he doesn't get hurt, he's having like a Cooper Cup season practically with how special it's going to be. Um, he plays with a QB and an OC. They're fully capable of getting him open and getting him the ball and using him in creative ways. And he also plays with a star wide receiver and, and Jalen Waddle, who's always hurt. So he stays relatively healthy. His running mate gets hurt, which gives him more targets. And there's really no third wide receiver or third target earner in this offense. Maybe that changes in this draft with, with the Dolphins. But this is kind of as perfect as it gets for Tyree Kill, outside of the fact that he's going to be 30 years old and he's, you're selling him at his peak value, essentially. Why would I trade him for someone like Michael Pittman or Terry McLaurin? So Michael Pittman, since 2021, Michael Pittman has cleared 129 targets three times, three years in a row, close to 130 targets. In 2023, he cleared 150 targets while hauling in 109 receptions. And his underlying statistical profile is highlighting a wide receiver on the verge of a major breakout. <laughs> CHSA and I. So I pulled this statistic from Rotoviz. 
It's called WORP, and it's a metric created by Josh Hermsmeyer, and it balances out a team's share of targets and a team's share of air yards, and it takes a look at a wide receiver's overall opportunity within the context of their offense. So it gives an idea of their statistical output within the context of their offense. Again, it's a metric that makes your eyes kind of glaze over, but when you start to see who leads it, you're like, okay, this is this might be a sticky stack because it's all the studs. Uh, his WORP had him just below CD Lamb and just ahead of Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross St. Brown, Chris Olave, and Jamar Chase. So that's pretty good for Michael Pittman. There is some risk with Richardson coming back and volume going down, but he remains the first read target share merchant of Shane Steichen's high-paced RPO attack. So I think Pittman is ready to pop in his age 27 season. So you take Pittman, who I think is more valuable than Terry McLaurin, and you pair him with a mid to late round 2024 first. When you're looking at the 2024 mid-round picks, you're looking at Brock Bowers, Troy Franklin, Brian Thomas Jr., Roma Dunze. Those are all pretty good places, pretty good pieces to acquire. And then late first projected to be Keon Coleman, J.J. McCarthy, Xavier Worthy, Trey Benson. So you're in a position where you trade Ty Lee, Tyree Kill and you get like a Brock Bowers and you get a Michael Pittman or you get Michael Pittman and Brian Thomas Jr., Michael Pittman, and even J.J. McCarthy, if that's your speed. Sure, you're giving up Tyree Kill, who probably is going to be amazing in 2024, but you're getting a high-quality player and another high-value position on top of that. I think that's a really good spot to be. In terms of Terry McLaurin, he's cleared 900-plus receiving yards in every year of his career. He's gone over 1,000 in four straight. And here are the list of quarterbacks that he's caught passes from. Case Keenum, Dwayne Haskins, Colt McCoy, Alex Smith, Kyle Allen, Taylor Heineke, Garrett Gilbert, Carson Wentz, and Sam Howell. It's a tough group. He's either going to be catching TD passes or catching passes from Drake May or Jaden Daniels. Sprinkling a little TD, positive TD regression, and Terry's looking at maybe a DJ Moore breakout type season. So, like Pittman, I like Terry. Terry's a year older, so you probably can ask for a little bit more. So maybe you you get that mid round or maybe even early round. Maybe you get like Jaden and Drake may with Terry McLaurin for Tyree kill. You're that person's paying up, but that person's probably ready to compete if they're trading for Tyree kill and you should try and take advantage of that. So I like these types of archetypes of for trades for, for Tyree kill. It's going to be tough trading him. You ask for a really high price. Because this is like one of the best players we're going to see over the next 10 seasons. So get another good ascending wide receiver, pair him with another hyper-talented player, and you're in a good spot. So what what are your thoughts on this? Do you think this is doable, feasible for the RTM listeners at home? Yeah. So I think one of the best points you make are when you're selling this level of like an elite talent, you're going to get the better end of the deal. Um, it doesn't make any sense for you to sell Tyree Kill for someone that, you know, you're like, yeah, I feel like we both kind of won this deal. Like, this is Tyree Kill. This is, you know, wide receiver two, two years in a row. Like, this is a player that, you know, if all goes well, is helping this person potentially win their league. So it's like, you want to absolutely take advantage of that and you want to go get, you know, you want to get the better end of this deal. So I really like both of those um, kind of deal propositions. I think to your point, Terry's been really good with, bad QB play and you pair that with a potential top four, top five pick. Yeah. You're walking away with one of the best QBs or, you know, uh, you know, like Malik neighbor, like you're walking away with two very talented players. And then Michael Pittman, like you said, he said like maybe on the verge of popping, he was just wide receiver 13. Um, I almost feel like it was a mini pop in itself. Like Michael Pittman's kind of here already. Like he kind of showed up quietly um, yeah. and had an awesome year, you know, kind of like a, Keenan Allen light in terms Ooh, of just like, like his that. production like and what we saw. So, um, you know, like he's kind of already arrived, but I like that. And then you pair it with maybe, you know, a later first round pick and you're feeling pretty good about yourself. So again, I think you're getting more overall capital. Like if you're putting like a value on, you know, you know, what is Tyreek Hill worth versus, versus both of these, you know, you're winning that deal um, in terms of like what you're going to get back. But the production you're giving up is, you know, in my opinion, worth it. So no, those are two fun ones. If you or anyone in your league has recently traded Tyree kill, let us know what you gave up or what you got in the process in the comments below. All right, Aiden, what is your first trade here? 
So we just finished selling the wide receiver two on the fantasy season, and we're going to take it up a notch, and we're going to sell the running back one. That is none other than Christian Good luck McCaffrey with this Good luck with himself. This so once again, we're taking the approach that, you know, if you're selling Christian McCaffrey, you like you better win this deal. Multiple running back one finishes in his career. Just an absolute freak. Kyle Shanahan offense. Um, there are some down parts, though. Christian McCaffrey does turn 28 this June. You're very close to the wrong age. Um in terms of the running back spectrum and that potential cliff that they tend to fall off as they near kind of that 27 to 30 year old range. Although he has been healthy the last three seasons, playing at least 16 games in both of those years, he was coming off of, uh, you know, 2020 and 2021, where he paid a combined 10 games. So he has been healthy, but there is some injury history with Chris McCaffrey, especially with some of the so- soft tissue stuff. You're not selling him on a competing team. It's very unlikely that your team is terrible with Christian McCaffrey, given the production that you're getting um, relative to other running backs at the position. So this one probably more so falls into the, like, I'm lacking elite kind of capital on your team. You may have Christian McCaffrey, and he's probably dragging you to wins. Like, that's great. But in terms of, like, really competing with the big dogs and having a well-rounded team, it's very likely that you're kind of falling into this bucket here. So I've got a couple different trade proposals here. Um, The first one I want to go over is kind of the point that Sean likes the best is you need elite QBs in a super flex league. Um, If you don't have at least one, potentially two, you're likely shit out of luck. So for that reason, I'm doing one for one Chris McCaffrey, and I'm going to try to go get either Justin Herbert or I'm going to get Joe Burrow. These are two young, controllable QBs. Wow. Depending on how you slice it, whatever list you're looking at, These are top six, top eight fantasy QBs in terms of the dynasty landscape. Um, You know, both around 25 years old, still relatively young and, you know, going to be a mainstay on your roster probably for at least the next half decade or more, Um, you know, giving QBs play much later into their careers than running backs. So go get Justin Herbert. (laughs) Yeah, go get Justin Herbert. Go get Joe Burrow. See if you can dangle that for Christian McCaffrey. I'd I'd feel pretty good about that. I think having those guys on your roster where Chris McCaffrey, you know, he's probably going to be good next year. I don't mean Sean talked about it. It's very likely he returns as running back one, probably. barring any injury. Probably. Beyond that is TBD. I know the Niners have a lot of, um, you know, kind of like decisions they have to make with roster buildup. Yeah. Um, he's still under contract, so he's likely not going anywhere. But, you know, as he gets closer to 30, that's, you know, not an asset you want to be holding. His value is never going to be this high. Second trade package, kind of continuing with like lacking elite assets and draft capital. So kind of combining both of these is I'm going to go again and get a mid to late first rounder plus a young wide receiver who absolutely shined last year in pretty limited touches. And that's Jaden Reed. So Jaden Reed's a really fun young asset similar to Christian Watson the year before. I think we're due for a bit of touchdown regression. I don't expect him to score 10 touchdowns plus every year. But I would assume LaFleur is absolutely going to keep him heavily involved in this offense. I think he more than proved that as a route runner and more of just, you know, a rusher. He's just a weapon, man. He's, you know, it's going back to the light version. We're like, this is Debo light. Um, You know, they kind of get him the ball everywhere. Jet sweeps, screens, down the field touches. Um, Jaden Reed's a guy that can do quite a bit in this Green Bay Packers offense with Jordan Love. So I think Jaden Reed... That's a mid to late first rounder, and you're feeling good. Because at this point, what you're walking away with Jaden Reed, maybe Brock Bowers, Roma Dunze, like it's pretty again, solid. That's pretty solid. They're not, they're not Christian McCaffrey, but you know, come a year or two, like these are these could easily be guys that are hanging 20 plus every single week. So it's it's tough. a hard sell. It's, it's a tough. Hard sell. It's, it's tough like, again. If you have traded Christian McCaffrey or someone in your league has traded Christian McCaffrey, please in the comments below. I want to see it. Let us know what the trade was. We want to know. I think what happens here is that CMC is probably going to be elite for another season. He probably is going to be a top 12 guy for the next two to three seasons, right? So you have to understand that there is a ton of value, but there's a ton of risk with holding a 28-year-old running back. Um, You kind of have like a two-year window or a two-off season window, in my opinion, to sell him. And his value probably will never be higher than it is right now in terms of his age and production. But if you could go get a quarterback, right? If someone for some reason has 
three really good quarterbacks. And the other one's Justin Herbert, and they're kind of sour on Justin Herbert because Herbert is going to be having a low passing volume with with Jim Harbaugh. Or maybe they're tired of Burrow always being injured, right? Because Burrow's now been banged up a couple, two years out of his four years in the league. I love that, right? You're trying to kind of buy low on those assets in that sense and sell high. Trading for two really good wide receivers to replace an aging running back, on paper, that might hurt your soul because running backs are so valuable for fantasy. But just for your dynasty team, <laughs> those two assets, one, are probably going to age well for you and help you win in the in the short term. But they also could be tradable by the time that they're 26 or 27. And you're just accruing value and stacking value over time. You just have to go with the most valuable assets. And that's where they are with running back with wide receivers and quarterbacks. So it's a tough sell to sell Christian McCaffrey, but it makes a ton of sense. All right. Who else are we selling? Talk to I'm, me. I'm selling another running back. Age 27 was the number two overall pick coming out of college for the uh, Nittley Lions, and, and that's none other than Saquon Barkley. So Saquon Barkley in this trade is I'm trying to cha- trade a aging veteran, veteran running back for either picks, a valuable QB asset, or maybe another running back, which I know seems kind of crazy, right, if you're trying to acquire running backs, but <laughs> he- he- hear me out here. So my two trades that I have, for an example, I've got Saquon Barkley for Bryce Young plus a mid-2024 second, and I've also got Saquon Barkley Plus, so if you have a mid to late second rounder and you have Saquon Barkley, you can turn that into Travis Etienne. So a little bit different than what we've been going through, but these are two of my favorite trades in the, in the Saquon Barkley world. And first and foremost, why do we trade Saquon Barkley? Well, he accounted for 75% of the Giants high value touches in 2023, which buoyed him to an RB 13 finish. So that's pretty good, but he had an elite fantasy role and his overall efficiency metrics were down though, in comparison from 2023 to 2022. Now, Aiden, was that because he played in one of the worst offenses in football, or is it because he was asked to carry the offense and wore down later in the year? It's probably a little bit of both, right, if you're looking at Saquon. I still think he's really good. I still think he's got meat on the bone. If I were a team trying to go over the hump and and get to the next level and win win a dynasty championship, I think trading for Saquon makes a ton of sense for this year. It's kind of like a one-year rental, but... Looking at the historical context, since 2010, there have only been 30 seasons where an RB over the age of 27 has cleared 16-plus fantasy points per game, which is like RB1 territory. Only nine of those came from players on teams that didn't draft them. So the list is CMC in 2023, LaShawn McCoy in 2016 and 2017, Raheem Mostert in 2023, DeMarco Murray in 2016, Darren Sproles in 2011-2012, Reggie Bush in 2013, Mark Ingram in 2019. So you've got some studs. you got some random ones that kind of popped off later on in their career. The odds are strong that Saquon joins this group, but 60% of those seasons came from guys who were already on their team or got that second contract because they were proving that value, right? So it's hard to say if Saquon's going to be really good this year or next, but the odds are kind of stacked against him given his age and the fact that he's probably playing on a different team in 2024. So I'm not saying Saquon is like a must sell, but if you have him on your team, I think you can flip him and you can get a decent return back considering that he offers some upside in 2024. So again, I highlighted two players worth trading for plus picks. So my first package was Bryce Young plus a mid 2024 second. So Bryce Young, the case for Bryce Young, he was terrible as a rookie, like, like really bad. (laughs) Um, (laughs) <laughs> is 156 fantasy points over a 16 game sample where the least amount of points scored by, by a rookie first round QB who played 15 games since 2010, since Brandon Whedon and Blaine Gabbert. That, that's how bad it was considering that's he played tough. so many games. He was so bad. And in terms of fantasy points per game, it was worse than Trevor Lawrence's abysmal 12.7 in 2021 but it was still better than Jared Goff's 7.6. And I think in terms of rookie QB seasons, I think Bryce Young comps pretty similarly to Jared Goff, right? But the main distinction is that Goff only played seven games. They shut him down when it was evidently clear that it was just a nightmare season for him. They trotted out Bryce Young for 16 games. So did he develop bad habits? (laughs) I don't know. Uh, But in terms of like most other number one picks, what an absolute malpractice of a situation the Panthers put him through. Like the Frank Reich hire sucked. Um, his offense wasn't good. He then went to the media and told everyone he actually wanted CJ Stroud. He then got fired. 
So he went through three offensive coordinators over the span of a season. And then they put him behind the wor- one of the worst lines in football and probably the worst receiving core put together in 20 years. Like, and we're, we're talking about an absolute shit show over in Carolina. But I think why Young is a decent buy right now, outside of the fact that he was good in college and I don't think he's magically not that good anymore. I don't think that's what happened. I think that we now have a good offensive coordinator and head coach with Dave Canales whose last three stops in the NFL have yielded really strong and effective QB season. So he was the QB coach in 2020 when Russ finished as the QB six for the best passing season of his career. He was the QB coach in Seattle in 2022 when Geno Smith finishes as QB five. He was the OC in Tampa Bay in 2023 where Baker finishes the QB 10. So I think young showed flashes enough to where he wasn't a complete wasteland of an asset in fantasy. He showed his escapability. He showed his ability to create out of structure. You give him better receivers. You give him a little bit better offensive line, better play calling. I think all of a sudden you're in a situation where he's a fringe QB one that you could acquire in year two when his value is like in the all time dumps. You pair that with a mid 2024. You got Bucky Irving, Blake Corum, Lad McConkey, Marshawn Lloyd. Those are all the names floating around there. I love that with Bryce Young. And in the case for Travis Etienne, if you want to go, hey, I want another really good running back. I think I'm a running back away. Why not go get Travis Etienne, who had a really strong 2023 season where he handled 80% of the team's high-value snaps, and he finished as the RB3 in total PPR scoring, all while playing behind a bad offensive line and an inconsistent offense. Like Etienne's still only 25. He was a first-round pick. He has workhorse size. He still has that 4-4-5 juice that he showed off at the NFL Combine. Even though he broke his foot in his rookie season, he's now two years removed from that Lisbrink injury. Uh, he's the clear alpha in this offense. Sorry, Tank Bigsby. Um, and he's finally shown off that pass catching promise he flashed in college. 58 receptions on 73 targets. So if you have to give up Saquon plus a late 2024 second, maybe you're giving up Saquon and the rights to Roman Wilson or the rights to Michael Penix, right? Which might make you a little queasy. But if you think ETN is that cross-controlled asset that you can then maybe flip later down the line or just get younger at the running back position, maybe give you a little punch over the next couple of years, which I think Travis Etienne will outscore Saquon Barkley over the next couple of seasons. I think these are trades that I'm making to get off Saquon. What are your thoughts on uh, Bryce Young, Travis Etienne, and mid to late second round picks with Saquon Barkley? Yeah, yeah those are both very different deals, which I like. Um, and again, I think just to echo one of the points you made, like which path you take with these two is like, how close are you? Um, yeah. How close are you? If this is like, you know, it's been pretty dark for a couple of years. Like, I'm probably going the Bryce Young route um, plus the second. I, I yeah, want – I'm restarting. I think – to your point, yeah, Bryce Young was terrible. Um, but, like, the the situation around him, no one's going to succeed in that. Um, I don't think C.J. Stroud would have been anything like he was this year in that situation. You know, it's like – that was that was very – All-time bad. That was very dark, yeah. Just yeah, complete malpractice all around. Um, you know, and you're gambling in terms of – how much better do we think they're going to improve the roster this offseason, which I think they will. Um, they've already improved coaching, like you said. Love Canales. I think what he's done with quarterbacks is is super impressive, especially with the quarterbacks he's done it with. You know, it's like he hasn't done this with, you know, total all-star guys. It's no. you know, G- Baker, Gino, another, Baker, another like, one, number you know. one pick, Gino, another high pick yeah. that struggled. He, like he's shown yeah. that he's been able to develop some of these guys who got drafted high for a reason. And he's able to build like functional NFL offenses around their skill sets. Yep. So yeah, no, I think that's super promising. Yeah, he he been saved saved two quarterbacks, saved two first round quarterbacks already. Um, you know, Bryce obviously is nowhere nowhere near as far along in his NFL journey as the other two were. And he but comps really similarly. He comp Bryce comp similarly to Russell Wilson, right? Like I think yeah. I compared him out of the draft. Canales built an offense for Russell Wilson. Size, yeah. So I'm not yeah. saying he's Russell Wilson. Don't get mad at me, YouTube commenters, but I'm just saying that there's comps, there's historical precedent. I think Canales is, is a great option for Bryce Young. I think Bryce Young's just a great buy low right now. Yeah. No, I like that one. Um, th- that's probably the route that I'd personally take. Um, I like the ETN route as well. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan ETN. of ETN. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't consider that like a rebuilding move. I'm kind of like... Or, Retooling. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it, like, it's more like a retool. Like, that's retool. someone where if I made like... Like the semis, um, maybe I make that move. You know, I'm I'd like I, like I've kind of been around there. If I'm you know 
around you know the seventh, eighth best team, sixth best team. I'm I'm probably gonna go for Bryce. Maybe take a step back. Maybe try to revisit the playoffs in a year or two. If I'm right there though, um, I'd go down the ETN path. So no, those are those are two pretty fun paths. So I like it. I like it. I think um, Bryce Young is a very interesting buy low candidate because to your point, he could very well excel next year, and he's going to be a lot more expensive. So it's. Um, I'm excited to see how that one uh, shakes out. All right, what's the last trade? What vet are you uh, getting off of here? So this is another guy that is very, very near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I've i been a truther for years with this guy, um, but it's likely time to sell. It's uh, it's it's Mr. Keenan Allen himself. We kind of kind of teased him earlier when talking about Michael Pittman. And this isn't for production by any means. Um, Keenan Allen's finished outside of the top 14 once in the last seven years. That's, and that's only because he missed time in those years. He In those six years he finished there, he caught 100-plus balls all but one year. He caught 97 the other time. So it's like PPR merchant Keenan Allen is you know as sturdy as it gets. Um, tied to Justin Herbert. He's turning 32 in April. He's an unrestricted free agent after this year. And there's really no telling how much longer Keenan Allen is going to be playing at this level for. Um, you know, I think what he did last year at age 31 um, was a bit of an anomaly. You know, we've talked about it in numerous episodes. Like having these type of seasons on the north, like north of 30, is very rare. It's Hall very rare. Hall of Fame track, um, basically. You're a Hall of Famer. And you know, Keenan Allen is you know likely a Hall of Famer if you look Probably. at his stats in terms of catches per game, yards per game. He's He's up there with anyone. Um, but again, looking at the age again, like, do we think this is repeatable? Do I think Keenan Allen is going to continue to be this top 10, top top five? Yes, I don't, I don't think so. I find from a super pass happy offense and a ton of injuries. Yep. And he just, it, Austin Eckler gets hurt. Mike Williams gets hurt. QJ suck. Like the run out was iconic for, for Keenan yep. just getting 15 targets per game. Like it set and, up pretty well for him. And he might not be a charger after this year. Um, well, let's say they go take Malik Neighbors here in the first round. Maybe QJ, you know, flashes a bit next year. You've got QJ looking good. You've got Neighbors. Like, you're like you're not re-signing a 33-year-old Keenan Allen. Probably take those guys, go sign a wide receiver three in free agency and kind of, you know, roll with the youth with Justin Herbert. So I think there's a ton of uncertainty around, um, you know, beyond this year with Keenan Allen. Um, so for that reason, I've I've got two different trades here. Um, kind of similar to Sean, one where we're packaging a pick of our own to kind of up tool and upgrade at a different position. The other kind of similar to our our first round where we're um, acquiring some picks plus a player. The first one, which I thought was fun, is um, going back to the QB. Need QBs and super flex. So what I'm doing here is I'm training Keenan Allen plus my mid-second rounder. Um, you're probably in a 6-8 to eight range at this point uh, for Tua Tagovailoa, which I think is fun. Um, you know, He's not in that real elite tier of QBs. Um, still just 26 years old, though, coming off a QB9 finish. This is a guy that, you know, is steady. You know, if you have two Tua's as your QBs, you know, let's say you've got maybe Goff as your other QB. You, got you, you can't quit two. him. You can't <laughs> quit your guy, Jared. I saw the grin. I feel like you knew the thought process was, was going down. Yeah, I knew it was uh, coming. You've got Tua and Jared Goff as your QBs in Superflex. I'm feeling pretty good about it, you know. Probably. Like yeah. neither one of them is that like elite, you know, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson OCs, tier. OCs but, and wide you know, receivers. OCs and wide are, receivers with those. Yeah. Two. These are both guys that are scoring you 20 plus every week. You know, you're getting 40 plus from your QB position on a weekly basis. You're feeling good. You can probably hang with most people. So, yep. Flipping Keenan plus a second, mid second for Tua. The other one I'm doing, um, which is a bit of a fun one, is this. I am trading Keenan Allen away. This is an upside play. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of people aren't going to like Aiden's this He's very nervous about this, as you can tell. He started <laughs> laughing and said, don't be mean to me. Okay, uh, what is it? Uh, this one is, I'm trading away Keenan for Isaiah Likely in a mid to late second round pick. Um, Isaiah Likely is, and Michael Penix? That's sick. Imagine that if so, you picked that up. Or, or Roman Wilson and, and Isaiah Likely? I like that. That's fine. Yeah, you're likely a taking a swing on yeah, like, yeah, you're likely taking a swing on a wide receiver there in the second round. Plus, Isaiah Likely, who has shown some awesome flashes. Um, we'll see what happens with Mark Andrews in the future. I've got to think they, like, Isaiah Likely has to start seeing the field, um, whether they're playing together. He's really or, good. Or, you know, 
he's just really giving Mark Andrews a bit more good. run. Like he's really freaking good. This guy's really good. Extremely young. Um, but yeah, like you're taking a swing here. This one is, you know, you're probably like going farther backwards again. Like there's two different paths here. How close are you? Like, do you want Tua? Are you that close? Or are you really rebuilding? You know, it's time to flip Keenan. We're like, you're probably flipping other players too. If you're kind of taking this approach, you're kind of clearing out a lot of the elite assets on your team, stockpiling picks and upside young players. So I love Keenan Allen. I Keenan hard, Allen has been hard to trade him. On like my redraft and dynasty teams for the last half decade plus, um, and I'll probably be drafting him again, especially in redraft. I'm I'm doing it again. Um, I'm absolutely doing it again. You don't want to wait till Keenan Allen's 34 as the wide receiver two or three on some other team, and at that point, like you're not getting anything for him. The window to sell Keenan is like nearly shut. Um, because come next off season, I will be 34 at the start of next NFL season. It it's this just, is it. And if you're like a win now <laughs> team. And you can just trade a second and maybe like a promising it's, young tight end who doesn't yeah. really do much for him, like kind of kind of a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah, it's relatively cheap to get a guy that, you know, pretty much if healthy, he's gonna be like top twelve wide receiver again, it feels like. It's just like the volume and the consistency with him is awesome. So it 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 hurts to sell him. It does. I love you, Keenan, but um the time to sell is now. I think I can make this exact trade. You have Keenan in our dynasty league, and I have likely in a second. <laughs> in a late second, I can make this exact yeah, trade. Yeah, let's, let's take talk. this offline. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk. <laughs> um, but that's it. We just we just gave you three reasons why it may be time to rebuild, and we also gave you tons of different trade examples. You can go and use the exact players that we talked about, or you can talk about similar aging elite vets and trading for similar types of wide receivers and quarterbacks. We are trying to be as directional as possible on this channel. We appreciate you for tuning in. If you haven't had a chance to watch our buy now or win now episode, go do it. It's a pretty cool Anthony Richardson dunking thumbnail. Go ahead and click on it. It should be showing up at the end of this episode. If you have not yet subscribed to the Rush of the Me channel, go ahead. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. We appreciate you for riding with us. Aiden, you got anything to say before we jump? Drop your trades in the comments. Dude. We love hearing what you guys are trying to do in your leagues. Keep doing it. Uh, love interacting with you guys. We appreciate you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Till next time.